Hello and welcome to another edition of Pelham School District Today. Today we have the Tech It Out Club at Pelham Memorial School. Uh, the advisor, Aaron Boucher, is one of our teachers at Pelham Memorial and we are here with six of the Tech It Out members. I'm going to have you actually go around and introduce yourselves. My name is Colby Walsh. I'm Jackson Gottschall. I'm Jackson Snyder. I'm Josh Larson. I'm Michael Flanders. And I'm Andrew Butler. So welcome to Pelham School District today. We're very excited to hear about what you're doing with Check It Out. So why don't you tell the people, um, what, what do you want them to know about Check It Out? Um, so Check It Out is, it stands for Technology Exploration Community Helpers. We want everyone to know what we're going to be able to do, how we can advance everyone in their technology knowledge. Um, so what do you want people to know? It's just technology, it's pretty obvious. Um, what we're trying to do, educate everyone on all things that are related to tech, and um, the goal that we are trying to set is to become a global community where we can teach people who may not have access to a lot of technology and get them involved in a lot more um, technology, basically. Great. That, that kind of goes with the tech it out. You're kind of getting yeah. technology yeah. out yeah. there. Yeah. I get it. So why do you think um, a social studies teacher, because Mr. Boucher is a social studies teacher, is starting a um, club about technology? Um, I think it's because he comes from teaching the past in the class, and that helps us improve our future, but using technology will also help, also help us improve our future by helping us learn more about certain things that we might have not known about the pa in the past or what we're going to do in the future help us choose a career maybe now expanding on that um especially the technology in the classroom is super important and especially with finding information about certain topics um we always he's we're learning about especially finding more than one source having three sources and if two information on two of the sources match up and one of them doesn't find another source and just making sure all your information is correct and that's really what technology is for. Yeah, information literacy today is especially important. There's so much information coming at all of our students all of the time that their ability to look at that information critically and to look at a variety of different sources and perspectives is extremely important. And so Michael's hitting on a, a catchphrase that I use in my class that we may be studying the past but we are preparing for the future. And if we're studying the past without preparing for the future then I don't think that I'm really educating them um, as I should be. And I think there's some phrase about um, if we don't learn the past or the history, we're doomed to repeat it or yep. something like history that. So it's itself. Yes, there you go. Um, so you meet once a week, every Tuesday, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, how many people are in the club right I now? Think I think there's about 10 to 15, I okay. think. I'm not sure the exact I number. Think, so well, why I think we're, we're about seven right now. There's okay. seven eighth graders, a couple sixth graders. And our, the club is still expanding. We're still recruiting more people. So why do you think people are interested in um, the Tech It Out Club? It's, I think oh, yeah. sorry, you can it's honestly, I believe this club is all about community service and really giving back to the community. Like eventually we're going to set up uh, how to use a computer at the public library down the road. And we're going to teach people how to use different services and things like that on the computers. I, I think that kids would love to do Tech It Out Club because they may not have all the technology that we are going to have here at school. They're not going to have that at home. Like some kids may not have drones at home. They won't have 360 cameras. We are going to may have all that and learn how to use it so then they will know how to use it later in future when they need it. One of the great things that's happened in the Pelham School District is the introduction of one-to-one -one devices because that really gives students critical access in my opinion to technology and learning how to use that technology in preparing themselves. And most importantly, it's just fun. You get to have yeah. fun with your friends yeah. and hang out after school. It's so something that's productive. Yes. What yeah, a and wonderful it can, it connects opportunity. the whole school district. It, it really does. I mean, you'll see us shooting around emails to each other, asking questions, or just messing around with each other. Another thing? No, can I say that? Yep, yeah. go ahead. So another thing is um, a lot of people we've connected with the, um, all the classmates that we have in the eighth grade. Uh, and we ask them, why won't you do, you want to join Tech Club, are you interested? In? And a lot of people are saying, no, it's, it's a really nerdy club. And where people are saying, you don't have to be smart, you don't have to be intelligent, you don't have to be the top of your class to be in the Tech Club. Tech Club, really, if you're interested in anything that has relate, relation to technology, you should be able to do this club and you should enjoy yourself. That's why I think this club is mostly boys 
and a lot of girls who are really just into like using their phones and don't want to expand on anything else um, if more girls or yeah more girls join this club I think a lot of more people would understand that you don't have to be extremely tech savvy or be a complete know-it-all to join this club so it's really about learning new things. Yes. Yeah. So exactly. if there's there's anybody out there watching and you have um, a child that would be interested in something like this yeah. um, and would like to learn just a little bit more yeah. about or doesn't yeah. know a whole lot about it but would be interested in yeah. learning it, this would be the perfect club to oh, join. Yes. Another okay. example. And we are looking club, for girls. Another club <laughs> like that would be chess club well where university. we go and we play chess and you don't necessarily have to be good at chess. You don't need to know how to play chess. You can just go and learn. And, and that's what we want to tackle. What a better way to do that than with your friends. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so what happens in Tech It Out Club? Um, basically, we um, take computers and expand our knowledge upon technology. And we just, we just have fun. We make videos, like tutorials about how to like, use certain programs. And we just have fun. Okay, and I think there's a video that you just created, yes. correct? Yes. And, and what is that, that video on? Mind Map 2.0. Yeah. Which is a uh, serv uh, program on the Google, dri uh, Google Drive. Sorry. Uh, you can download it on the Chrome store, and it goes right into your Google Drive. And it's essentially what you're doing is you're taking, it's making a mind map, which is a bunch of different nodes. And it it's categorizes and uh, organizes information similar to the way that your brain would. Okay, and so you have a video, so we're going to show you that video yes. right yep. now. Yes. Hey guys, today we're going to tech it out with Josh. Um, today I'm going to show you guys how to make a mind map. Um, so the first step you're going to have to do is have your Google Drive already set up. Once that's done, you're going to see a blue icon in the top left corner. You're going to click on that. Now you're going to see the more key at the very bottom of it. And if you do not have mind map in the set of apps that you already have, um, you just have to go to connect more apps and you just have to type it in to the search bar then you just have to download the app and you should be good to go now I already have a mind map made for this video okay so once you have your mind map created the first step you need to do is make your title so we already have a pre-title created it's called potatoes now you can make it anything you want and just make sure it's related to your topic so again our topic is potatoes once you have your topic, um, there's going to be a blue bubble in the center of your mind map. This is called the root node. The root node is where you are going to put your topic in. Once you have your root node completely done, you're going to be adding child nodes. Now, child nodes are practically the, uh, how can I put this, the main ideas or the subtopics of your topic. Now, to do this, you have to right-click, or in case you have like a Mac or a Chromebook, um, you can double-click, or you just use your two fingers, and you're going to see Insert Child. Now, once you insert your child, you can just type anything in. So in this case, we'll just do, uh, where are they from? Okay, so once you have your several subtopics created, um, you're going to be adding more child nodes to your original child notes. Now this will be either answering the question which in this case or you're going to be adding details to your given subtopic. So where are they from? The potatoes are usually from areas with a lot of water for instance um, Ireland. And just in case any of you are wondering um, you can put as many child nodes as you want off of um, one specific node so you can just type, you can put as many as you want right here. But just to notice, um, if you do not have anything typed in to your um, child node, it will get deleted. So make sure you have your information ready to be typed in before you create your child node. Okay, so a cool feature though that you can do use with your mind map, uh, you can add colors to some to your child nodes. Um, to do this, you right click again and you're going to see the change color icon and you can choose from a variety of colors. The colors though do have a purpose. Um, just in case your mind map is extremely large, um, these can be used to color code your mind map. So in this case, we'll just use pink. But once you have your pink set, any child nodes coming off of that specific node also have to be pink. Something else you can do with your nodes is add images. To do that, it's the same thing for everything else. Um, right click. 
and you're going to see node dimensions can be right next to change color. Um, your images, though, do have to be related to your subtopic. So our topic, though, is potatoes. So we can put potatoes in there, and we'll get a picture of that. So right here. Now, you, the normal size of the image is going to be a lot larger than what you want. So in this case, it's 512 by 333. What you want it to be is around 150 to 100 in your width. So we'll just do 125 for this. Now, you don't need to edit the height because that will automatically get edited. So when you're doing your mind map, it's going to be also somewhat like a research paper. Um, you're going to have to have sources of where you're going to be getting your information from. So we have a website right here that gives you a lot of information about potatoes. So we're going to show you how to insert a link. Now, the insert a link seems complicated, but it's really basic in general. Um, you can hit anywhere on your node, be here, 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 but it doesn't really matter. So all you have to do, you copy and paste the link, so control C to copy, and then click on your node again, anywhere you want, paste it, and you will see your um, URL right there. Now you just have to click away, and it should pop up this little paperclip keychain something like that and that means that your link is in there now if you click on it though it will have the link right there another thing you can do with your mind map is attach a file so just right click again and you see the attached file that's a paperclip right there now in your Google Drive if you're brand new you're not gonna have any folders or any papers or anything in there um, but when you're creating a mind map you would have you would have a couple papers that back up your information already it's not definite, but you might have it. So I know that we don't have any right now because this is just a pre-made mind map. But you could take any paper you want and attach the file directly to there. Okay, so now we have a paper to show you guys how to add a file. So you get back to the original position, right click, and then click attach file. So you just search in so that we now have something. So potatoes, you have your folder right there. And then you're going to see your document right here. Now you just click on it, press select, and you'll have the paper clip on the top right of your node. Now all you have to do is click on that uh, paper clip and you will see your entire paper. And you can scroll down as you go and you can see all your paper. So instead of having to jump back tab to tab and looking at your paper, you can just see it right there. Okay, so now we're down to our two final um, things you're going to learn about. Uh, the second to last thing I'm going to teach you is how to select the subtree. Now, selecting subtrees is um, really cool for when you have like a lot of information and it's not colored yet. So when you're usually done, this is the best time to use select subtree. So let me just get all of the everything to white and I'll show you then how to use select subtree. Okay, so as I was saying before, um, selecting subtree is easy for when you just have to uh, change colors. That's practically the only thing you need it for though. So select subtree, now you have all three of these nodes selected. Um, then you can go over, change the node color back to what it was originally, and you can do this with any other color you want. Um, you can delete all three of those nodes if you want to. Um, and yeah, that's really the only purpose though for selecting subtree. Okay, so the final thing you're going to learn about is expanding and collapsing your subtree. Now this is very useful for when you only are working on something that's important. So if I was just working on this at the moment, I have a lot of other information that could distract me here. So what the um, collapsing the subtree is for is to get all the information out of the way. So you have your main idea or subtopic right here and you press collapse subtree this is at the top and all the way to the right so everything will get um, collapsed and you can move it around and when you expand it again it will pop up right there all right so this should end the video um, thank you guys so much for watching please like comment and subscribe I'd like to give a big thanks to uh, one of our members from tech it out Colby for helping me out creating this video and until next time see ya Okay, so I'm thrilled about MindMup. I can't wait to try it.
I can already see where I can use it to organize information in some of my meetings. I also teach uh, graduate classes yep. at a local college, and it sounds like a perfect opportunity for me. And now I feel like I'm able to do that, and I learned it from you all. So I think that's what you're trying to yes. say is Tech It Out Club is about you teaching the community, other people, it doesn't matter your age. It yeah, just, exactly. It's about learning something and, and getting it out there. That's great. Um, so why is technology so important in your classrooms right now? Because uh, we heard a little bit about social studies. What about all your classrooms? Well, technology is a really important part in the classroom because it helps you because technology is a very important part and later in life you need it to, um, to for jobs and all, all that kind of stuff. And um, technology sh almost shrinks the world so-called and um and there's could be someone across the world and I could talk to them with technology like I'm right next to them also off of that he's saying that technology helps and in soul studies we are using mind most but I have had multiple projects where it's not in soul studies it's English it's science and I still go back to those resources like mind Mup or any other uh, computer software just so that it can help me on organizing. So that learning it helps you in every single class, not just social studies. And I think the more experience you have using this, the better yes. you will be at yeah. getting yeah. additions to everything. That's else. one of the things that Tech It Out Club 2 wants to see is that by introducing these tools, you know, a teacher may introduce it in their class, but then a student can see the usefulness of that tool for another class or another activity even outside of school where they can apply that tool. And, um, you know, as you mentioned at the beginning of this um, episode, you were talking about that our students are bombarded with information. Yes. yes. Constantly all day long. All so day. this is a great tool to help yeah. you yeah. organize that information. Yeah. And, find and that that's and if it's a tool that works for you, then you use MindMup. There's plenty of other apps and tools that can help you organize information as well. Yes. So this one would work for me. I definitely can see that. Um, yep. But there might be other ones that will work for for other people. Yes. Um, so I'm excited to see what other ones you guys have out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, technology is so transformational. I mean, I think about the Gutenberg printing press when that was invented. Uh, not long after that, ex uh, literacy expanded because now books, the printed word, was so much easier to create and then spread. Now we're in an age where we have 3D printers. And this is the type of world that our students are entering into. So what revolutions, what changes to life as we know it is that going to bring? And by introducing tech to them early and with groups like this, getting that uh, technology into other people's hands is going to help them deal with that transition, that coming change uh, more adaptably. Great. So how's Tech It Out um, helping our community? Tech It Out is helping our community not only by expanding their knowledge and helping them learn how to use the technology, but helping them by so they can learn how to use it in everyday lives. And they can u use it upon their jobs, maybe their schools, and mostly for them to have an easier but more helpful life. Now, well, expanding on that, um, Tech It Out is really about helping the community, like learning to use certain tools and things of that nature. But after we teach them that tool, they could go out and want to learn another one. And we want them to continue to expand their knowledge on computers, drones, um, coding, all sorts of things of w within technology. And if one of our videos that we made could drive them to make their own videos, that's one of the most amazing things. And that is another goal of Tech It Out, is to inspire students to become interested in um, STEM fields. Inspire? And we, our mission in this Pelham School District is to inspire success one mind at a time. So that is great. You're in a club that's doing that, inspiring people. Um, how can technology empower teachers? Um, uh, technology can empower teachers by making the learning environment better. Mm -hmm. It makes it easier to spread information throughout the classroom and it just makes it um, more fun for all the students. Like, uh, we use Kahoot in class, mm -hmm. which yeah. is. Um, which is sort of like a game. There, are, uh, it's multiple choice, and whoever gets the question first, like right, whoever gets the question right first, gets the most amount of points. And then you do that for, um, like, say, ten questions, and whoever has the most amount of points wins. It's really fun. So you could review a lot of information, yeah. kind of like Jeopardy, but yeah. it's exactly. online. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. It's it a great review tool. Oh. 
So. Go ahead, Kobe. Oh, with Kahoot, it's also kids love to do it. When you hear Kahoot in class, you want to play Kahoot yeah. because yeah. For sure. you're playing against all your friends. So you're like, all right, I want to beat him. So it's a great friendly competition yeah. in getting kids involved with their academics. And what about we actually do recently with Kahoot? Oh, um, so with Kahoot is we took the information of what we're learning about right now is the different causes of the American Revolution. So we took those causes and then made 10 question cahoots on those causes. And what we did is we t took those cahoots and we did a battle with between the upstairs team and the downstairs team and who, whichever team came out with the most points at the end of those cahoots finished as the victor. Oh, great. That's Which exciting. Really yeah. It, it, it that's was, a nice friendly competition that, that keeps oh, yeah. your, your teams as a whole grade level. And yeah. you don't have to split yourself between upstairs and downstairs. You actually mm -hmm. interact. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the great things about technology is creating those connections where it's interesting how technology can, you know, you have the physical space of the classroom, but then when you have technology available to you, like the Chromebooks, that expands it to this virtual space. And that virtual space allows for collaboration where the walls, the space in the room are no longer a hindrance to interacting, communicating, and learning from others. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what we heard and how does it empower teachers, how does it empower students? Technology. So technology is probably this is I say this is probably one of the biggest questions. Um, technology can empower students to do a lot more than what they are capable. When you go back, let's we're say capable. like fifteen, yeah. we're capable. We're capable. Uh, like I'd say, fifteen years ago, you would not expect someone to be going onto a computer or a phone or as a technological device and use their information for that. They would be using books or papers or something that was printed down on the paper. Um, nowadays, you're able to use your devices and you're able to go on websites and search up all the information that you need to know for something. Um, it can also help your students become more empathetic and allow them to contact with uh, diverse individuals. So I think uh, Colby had said it a little bit ago, um, or maybe it was Jackson. Uh, with technology, you're able to communicate worldwide and you can learn a lot of different things from different people. So if I wanted to communicate with someone from Asia, I can learn a lot about their language, um, how maybe their diverse uh, cultures, and a lot more. And the, the point that the technology is really breaking that boundary between upstairs and the downstairs teams, it's not only just school-wide, it's town wide, between towns, between states, between countries, between the whole world. It's really breaking down all sorts of boundaries. Also it can empower students by, we do get a lot of information every day and kids can get very stressed out about remem remembering that. But there now that with this technology, there are a lot of different apps that you can put what you learned into that so you're not stressing about I have to remember this constantly you can go back and look at it and be like oh okay now I remember that I can study it from here instead of worrying about writing it down really fast while the teacher's talking and one of the things that they're pointing to is that learning now has really become a global endeavor it's no longer something that's just localized to your school or your town or what you're immediately contacted with it's so much bigger than that. And that's one of the reasons why these videos will be fantastic because we're setting up a YouTube page, uh, website as well, um, to allow not just people who are local, but people who are global to access this information, just in the same way that you guys, when you don't know how to do something, where do you go? YouTube. Google it. Yeah. <laughs> Google, Google, Google it. it. Yeah. You go to YouTube. I mean, the other day, I, um, Mrs. Doe was fantastic. She gave us a, uh, a green screen oh, yeah. for us. That, it's a very big green screen. Yeah. When I opened the thing up, it expanded, and I didn't know how to close it no. so that it would actually <laughs> fold back up and fit back in its case. I was like, all right. So I went on YouTube, and I found somebody who had figured it out, and then there's a specific way that you do, and it closes right up. So information and where to find it is so much more global. I learned how to put the soft top on my Jeep through YouTube. Yes. And I had to go through a whole step-by-step -step process. And expanding on uh, what Mr. Boucher said, school used to be about like memorizing facts and mm -hmm. like just memorizing everything. Now that we have technology, we can explore the information and we can get like a more broad understanding of what we're trying to learn. That's a very good point. Right, critical Excellent. thinking. Excellent. It's more effective learning yeah. by using technology. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what other goals does Tech It Out have? Um, Tech It Out likes to make a catalog of tools and videos. For example, MindMap. We made a video on it and we were talking about MindMap because it's a great tool to have. 
It can help you in any class outside of school. It can help in your everyday life. And it also puts, we want to put kids like in the center of learning so they feel that they're in a good learning environment and instead of stressing out about school, it's an after school thing so they're there, they're with their friends and they can take everything in and they learn from it. Also to solve world, real world problems. So for example, we are sending drones over and we're thinking about it and we may do it. But with technology, the drones can be faster and stronger. So when we send them over, we're not worried about them constantly breaking over down uh, to overseas. To overseas. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> but so when we send them overseas, that we don't have to worry about them breaking and uh, the people over there are going to come at us. We don't have to worry about that when we have stronger and more powerful technology. And also, students um, normally could go into STEM careers, especially with technology. And STEM careers mean science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And in all, something that connects all of those careers is technology. They all have technology related. And those careers are going to be way more known and they're going to be way more available because of technology. And that's amazing because more jobs. Also, photo editing and video editing. There are photos everywhere. People make a living off of just editing photos. And you can, in Tech Club, you will learn how to make videos, how to edit them, how to edit pictures. And so instead of it just being one guy, you, have, you, have, you constantly have to go to that one person to edit your video. You can do it yourself and be independent. Also, learning about new tech. And let's say, oh yeah, I already know how to use that, okay. But if you come to this club, you can learn more in depth on how to use it. You can know, you can already know how to use it, but when you learn in depth, then you'll have a better understanding of what it does. And so in the future, and let's say you need it in your job, you will perform successfully at that job. And I have an example of that. Uh, while we were creating our video on MindMup, um, I thought I already had a pretty good understanding of it. I was completely wrong. <laughs> um, uh, just by talking with the, uh, other members of the club, just by working on the video, I learned that just simply by ins hitting a button instead of having to go through three, four steps, just to add another node, it could be as simple as pressing two buttons on, on the keyboard and just exploring the technology is a huge goal of this club. And why don't you guys, if you wouldn't uh, mind, talk a little bit about the process that we use as you're creating your videos. Because mm -hmm. the, the learning part comes before you create your videos, yeah, obviously. So when we created the MindMup video, uh, we had to make a script because I think if we had that, we'd be totally unprepared and it would have taken a lot. I know the take, making the video because it was the very first, it did take a while. But once we got the hang of making the video, um, we had to make a bunch of trials and we practically combined all the trial videos into one giant video, not editing, but we just made one whole video. Um, we were able to, luckily we were able to pause it, so once everything got out of hand and we were like, we need to take a break, go over everything, we pause the video, continue where we left off, and then build it off right from where we were. Also when we were making the video, I understood, I thought I understood Bottom Up, Lake Jackson very yeah. well, and I still understood it mostly. But when we had the list of what we wanted to teach you, I looked at it and I was like, wait, I don't even know how to do that. So making the video taught me how to do some of the things on the mind map. So what has Tech It Out accomplished so far? Well, don't forget we're still new. Yeah. We just created this club and um, we've accomplished one thing, which is the mind map video and to teach other people about mind map and how they can use it. But we have other, many other projects that we want to do mm -hmm. to help students and help us learn about it too. And um, yeah, yeah, we got we got a lot of great things. Looking forward to this club. Yes. And a lot I of can't ideas. Wait to continue the, around. Yeah. Can't wait to continue the rest of this year. With this we are club. also still growing. For example, of us still growing. Me and him just joined like two or three days ago. Yep. So well, every other day, a new member can join. It's all. People will constantly keep joining because it's an open access club. Absolutely, and they're, already, they're also already very involved. And one of the other ways that this um, club helps them prepare for when they're in the working world and even in the tech world is we kind of have it structured like a mini um, tech company. So, like for instance, Google, like right? For so example. Exactly. So, for instance, we have different teams. So, we have the Mind Map team. Yep. We have another team working on another tool called um, Ed Puzzle. Mm -hmm. And so, as students explore those. Um, they look at the different functionalities. What can be done 
with these different tools, what do we want to highlight, what do we want to show to people uh, that they can do with them. Excellent. Another thing to add is we might, I, I was talking about this yet uh, a couple days ago, like we might want to make an app to help just like have a bunch of tutorials on it. Maybe put it on like the Google Play Store or the just regular YouTube. Chrome Store or Apple YouTube, Store. any place we can. All those but I was hoping maybe we could do that this year. Excellent. So last month I interviewed the P Tech Squad. So the P Tech Squad is at Pelham High School, mm -hmm. and they're kind of some people might call it a help desk, but not mm -hmm. quite. And they do a lot of this research yeah. type thing. So now we have something at the middle school, and we have something at the high school. So yes. when you leave the middle school, you'll have something to go into, yeah. which is yep. great. Yep. Um, so you can continue your your passion, and then I'm sure that you can uh, help the Tech It Up Club or Tech It Out Club when you um, when you uh, or at the high school yes. as well. You could yeah. come back and be mentors, so that yeah. would be great. Yeah. Um, so thank you for coming and thank sharing with us you. what you're doing. And thank you for joining us for another edition of thank Pelham you. School District Today. Thank you.